Hi right, guys, welcome back to Fat Bass TV. Um, I want to talk a little bit today about my top 10 fall transitional baits. Now the bass right now, they are in a transitional phase where the bait fish are moving into the, the backs of these creek channels and creek pockets and the bass are following them. It, right now is a really tough time to catch them. You have to really, really know where to find them. I, I've actually been having a problem myself, you know, catching bass. But I have noticed that they are starting to to move up. I say move up. They're starting to move to the the deeper ledges that move into these uh, creek channels. That right there is is where I've been catching all of my bass for the past few weeks. I haven't been catching any shallow. I haven't been catching any near the banks. Um, they've all been um, in the the transitional area, the the drop offs from the deep deep water to the shallow water that's moving into these um, into these creek channels. And I've noticed that you know where where the creek mi creek mouths from the lake. At the, at the opening of the creek mouth, I've noticed a lot of shad activity in these areas. And that's where, that's where I've been catching all my, all my bass. So, um, with that being said, I want to go, I want to talk about uh, my top 10 lures for catching these bass. And right now, these are in no particular order whatsoever. It's, it's all trial and error on what works. You know, on certain days, some of these may work better than others. It, it just all depends on the conditions and the situation. So, airplane. So let's move into it. Let's start. We'll start with uh, the first one. Spook. This is, in early mornings, this is starting to be my number one go-to lure is a spook and and all these lures you're going to notice that that i either throw uh, a shad pattern type color or something that is uh gold and chrome something that gives off some flash those are about the only two colors that i'm going to throw this time of the year and, and you know it's starting from Depends on where you live. Here, it's starting. It's starting now. It started two weeks ago, and it's going to go through till probably, you know, Novemberish, Decemberish, depending on the weather, depending on, depending on how, how the weather, whether we have a, a warm winter or a cold winter, depends on how these fish are going to react. And all they're doing is chasing the bait fish. That's all they're doing. So, number one is a spook. And I'm gonna throw this. I'm throwing it on braid, 50 to 65 pound braid. You can get away with mono. I have thrown it on mono. Mono works fantastic. I just like braid. I, I just like braid. That's just me. I'm a braid guy. Um, yeah. Mono. Some people like mono because it's got. It, it's a little stretchier. It, it doesn't matter either one. Just. Stay away from fluorocarbon on the on these topwater lures because they're not they're not going to act right. They're not going to move right. Fluorocarbon sinks. It's going to make the nose of that spook dip down when you're trying to work it, and it's it's going to give you more headaches than anything else. So um, I like to throw that on a I like six six medium heavy because when you're working that bait, I don't have to worry about you know my rod tip hitting the water. You can get away with seven foot seven foot two. Me personally, I like a six six medium heavy rod um gear ratio it's not a big factor i don't think i i, I use anywhere from a from a six four to one all the way up to a eight one to one it just it all depends on what you're comfortable with so let's move into number two and i don't have it out here with me but it's a pop r but i have one of these because this is slowly slowly becoming my favorite over the pop R. And this is a devil horse. I like these devil horses. They're becoming they're becoming they're starting to take the place of pop R for me. For me. Excuse me. Um and yeah this if if the spook is not working then either this or the pop R will work. And I'll give them you know 
if you get out there, I'm going to give it 15, 20 minutes with the spook. If I see a lot of top water activity and I'm throwing that spook out and they're not hitting it, I'm changing. I'm changing baits. I'm changing lures. I'm going to find something that works because that that top water shad activity is not going to last long. It's not. It's it's only going to be for for a short period of time and and once that's over, then then the search is on. So I'm going to throw it on the same. Uh, 66 medium heavy 50 to 65 pound braid on this the next one is and this you guys have been seeing me start catching fish on these a lot here lately and that's a spinnerbait i like for for super muddy water i like the double willow leaf blades because it puts out that thump they, they don't move as fast, they're slower moving, and they're not as flashy. They put out more of a vibration. That's a thump. You can see your rod tip just super muddy water. That's what I'm going to go with. If it's not super muddy, if it's got any visibility at all, I'm going with the, with the Willow Colorado combination. That's it. I throw it on. You know, you can get away with 7 foot to 7 foot 4. I like throwing... Uh, the white bird heavy with these that's just what i like that that white bird heavy has a has a super soft tip so and i'm using 15 15 to 17 pound fluorocarbon maybe even 20 depending on depending on how much um structure i'm throwing this into because i'm going to throw this thing i'm going to throw it i'm going to throw it in grass i'm going to throw it in lay downs stick ups i'm going to throw it in anything i can find that's where this is going any kind of structure I can find, I'm going to throw it, flip it, pitch it, whatever, trying to get those bass to react. So anywhere from 15 to 20 pound fluorocarbon and whatever real gear ratio you, you like to run with a spinner bait, it doesn't matter. I, me personally, I like a 6 4 to 1, but that's just me. That's me personally. All right, so the next one we're going to go into is going to be, I didn't even bring it, I got it right here. So the next one I'm going to throw is going to be a, or the next, not the next one I'm going to throw, the next one we're going to talk about is going to be the the swim jig. Now you guys know how much I love these swim jigs. I'm going to throw either a super bright color like this bluegill color, a white, or this black and blue, depending on water color. Now the black and blue, I have it paired up with a green pumpkin trailer. That's the only difference. I have the black and blue paired with a green pumpkin trailer. These swim jigs, I'm throwing them on anywhere from a 7 to 7.4. You know, I like the 7.3 extra heavy. That's just me because when I set that hook, I want that fish to know it. I want that fish to feel it. I want that hook, I want that hook to drive through that fish's face. I don't want there to be any doubt about what just happened when I set that hook. So I throw the uh, the Defender 7.3 Heavy, excuse me, 7.3 Extra Heavy, and you can cast, you can cast these things out, and you can swim them back, you can flip them into heavy cover, you can you can swim them deep, you know whatever the situation calls for. Um, yeah, 20 pound fluorocarbon is what I use. Don't know if I already said that, but I said it again. Excuse me, my battery's about to die. I'm gonna change it real quick. All right, sorry about that battery done I thought I had enough to make it apparently not all right so we're gonna go on to the next one the next one is gonna be a square bill square bill I'm throwing it on 15 pound fluorocarbon um, somewhere I like seven foot uh, medium medium action rods with a fast action tip right now I'm trying out the white bird uh, seven foot medium heavy and it is working phenomenally I really, really like that rod with the square bill. That's me personally, That's, but it's working out great. Square bill, I'm throwing shad patterns or either some kind of gold and chrome, something with flash or a shad pattern is what I'm throwing. And I'm throwing this thing anywhere I can find any kind of structure. Stick ups, lay downs, logs, anything. I'm beating this thing off of them, trying to get that reaction bite. Next one, 
I don't have out here with me, but it's a Mojo Fluke. I like the white Mojo Flukes. It's going to be either white or I think it's called Smoky Shad. It's kind of a has kind of a bluish tint to it, but it's going to be a Mojo Fluke. And I've been experimenting with the with the Mojo setups. I've been running the little finesse weight with the T-stop. And I'm finding that if you use the um, the split shots, that they work just as good, and they're easier to, to get on and off. I'm trying split shots. You know, you can add and take away weights to find that perfect balance. So that's that's what I'm using. I find that it's working a lot better for me. All right. So next is a lipless crank. Any lipless crank will work. These are Strike Kings. That's just what I have. You can use any of them, the six cents, whatever, it doesn't matter. If you're fishing ponds, I like using quarter ounce. Lakes, half ounce. Half ounce is normally what I'm gonna have tied on. I'm just ripping it out of grass. Throw a, I try not to throw it in too much structure. Bouncing it off the bottom, or yo-yoing it, or whatever you want to call it. Um, just trying to get that reaction bite. There again, I'm using seven foot to seven foot four, 15 pound fluorocarbon is what I'm using. Next. Jerk bait. It's now becoming time for, for jerk bait season. Um, right now, it's still a little bit too warm for it. So later, you know, early October, middle October, when it really starts cooling off is when I'm going to start throwing these. This is this is just a Strike King, or maybe it's a real pile, I don't remember. What's it say? Yeah. This is a Rapala Shadow Wrap right here. I like I like the shad pattern colors. And when it comes to a jerk bait, I want either a shad color or I have this mega bass that has a really, really bright I don't know if you can see that's purple and blue on the top and chartreuse on the bottom. It's really, really bright. The two hook, three hook, doesn't really matter to me either way. I don't really care. These uh, mega bass are starting to really become some of my favorite. They're just, they're super expensive. But yeah, I'm throwing these. I'm throwing them on uh, the same rod that I'm using uh, for my uh, spinner bait. 7-2 heavy just when you're working that just make sure when you're working it that you always bring the tip back to the bait that's what gives it that that darting action that comes back to where it's supposed to be next it's my favorite right here the reaction innovation skinny dipper swim bait i catch a lot of fish off of these right here a lot and I vary it up. Sometimes I use a weighted swim bait hook. Sometimes I use a swim bait hook that's not weighted. It just depends on what I'm throwing it in. If I'm throwing it in um, in heavy cover, grass, lily pads, anything like that, I'm not using a weighted swim bait hook. And I'm using braid if I'm throwing it in, in uh, the thick cover. Now, if I'm just throwing it in open water or, or you know, kind of flipping around lay downs and stuff like that, 20 pound fluorocarbon, same rod, 20 pound fluorocarbon with a weighted swim bait hook. Gets them every time. And these, these swim baits, they're so versatile, I found that, you know, you can throw them out and uh, with the, if, you, if you're throwing it in the thick grass or lily pads, you can kind of burn it back and it almost acts like a you know like a topwater or, or wake bait and those fish are going to come out and nail it every time now if you're if you're throwing it up to the bank or or anything like that you can actually use these with the weighted swim bait hook and you can flip them into the brush and then just kind of pop them a couple of times and those fish will nail it when they come back down kind of like you would with a uh with a lipless crankbait just throw it out there and just kind of pop it up and let it fall back down and nine times out of ten they're going to hit it on the way back down just keep that in mind i found that it, that has worked really really well and last but not least is a light texas rig um i'm i'm throwing it on what was that 
it's a 7.4 heavy I think the defender rod I think it's a 7.4 heavy uh, 15 to 20 pound fluorocarbon is what I'm using it depends on where I'm fishing and what I'm fishing in most of the time it's going to be on 20 pound fluorocarbon but when I say light I'm using quarter ounce or less weight it's normally an eighth ounce tungsten weight is what I'm using and either a three aught or four aught hook, whichever one of these I'm using, but it's going to be either it's either going to be this Zoom finesse worm. Now you can also use these for shaky head. Not alterate, alterate, alternate back and forth, but it's just the the Zoom finesse worm, and you you can actually wacky rig these too. They work really good that way too. Um. If I have that on, I'm throwing quarter ounce weight. Or if I have the Zoom trick worm, I'm not going to pull it out because everybody knows what a trick worm is. I'm throwing it on an eighth ounce, eighth ounce weight. So, um, that's my setups, guys. That's what I'm going to be throwing. That's what you're going to see me start throwing because it's, it's starting to become fall. It's starting to the weather patterns are starting to change I've noticed the fish are starting to move they're not out the smaller ones are moving up now I think the bigger ones are still out deep but they're scattered they're not they're not grouped up like they were a month ago you know a month ago if you found one fish deep chances are you could sit in that one spot and just catch fish all day and it's not like that now um, they're, they're kind of scattered out so I think they're getting ready to move up also you know I've started catching the smaller fish that are moving up chasing bait fish moving back or moving up into these creek channels so now's the time I'm, I'm fixing to get everything rigged up for fall and I'm gonna I'm gonna do this until it gets cold I appreciate you guys watching like always I couldn't do it without you guys I really appreciate it if you hadn't seen this video up here or that video down here click on either one of those pretty good videos subscribe is right there I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. It helps me a lot right there. Boom. See you tomorrow.